Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we're going to build a recycle bin, just like Windows has. So when you delete a file, it's not gone, gone. It just is in the recycle bin. And then you can go in there and find stuff that you deleted. And if you need it, well, you got the data's right there. You can go and then recreate the record. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Well, I've done several different videos, including this one on why you shouldn't delete data, important data, right? You could delete temp data, sure. But if it's a customer or an order or product information, don't delete it, mark it inactive or something, because that data might be important in the future. Now, I know a lot of you might have databases that you've built and like some like mine, my database is 20 years old and it would be difficult to go through if I wanted to add like an is active or an is deleted field It'd be difficult to go through my entire database and have all of the other forms and queries and reports and stuff recognize that field. I would literally have to update hundreds of different objects. So with that being said, if you've got an older database, you've been working for a while with it, and you want to make it so that you don't have to retroactively try to fit that in, you can make a recycle bin. A recycle bin basically will just be a table that'll hold whatever information you want to throw in it. If you want to delete a customer, you just throw it in the recycle bin. It'll be tagged as a customer. That way you've got his information. So if a year from now, someone says, hey, yo, that uh, that customer that died last year, uh, where's his information? You can go into your recycle bin and at least find it. It's not gone, right? You don't have to go restore from a backup from last year to try to find his information. So a recycle bin keeps everything tidy. Plus with one recycle bin, you could throw any kind of records in there you want. You could throw orders in there, customers in there, contact information, products, whatever you want, throw it in the recycle bin. And if you happen to need it later, it's there. It's like, it's like the spaghetti sauce. What is it? Prego, ragu, one of those. It's in there, right? It's in there. So you, just a spot to throw your garbage. And then if you want to, right, every couple of years, you can delete the oldest stuff out of there. If you, you know, if you're approaching that two gigabyte limit and you're, you know, you're confident you're not going to need this anymore, you can go ahead and either back it up and dump it somewhere else or do whatever you want with it. So today I'm gonna to show you how to make a recycle bin. I'm gonna show you how to make it so it works for any form in your database. You just drop a recycle bin button on it and a couple little edits to the code and there you go, there's your recycle bin. Now this is gonna be a developer level class. So what does that mean? Well, if you're new to VBA and you you know wanna get started, here is a video to start with. It's about 20 minutes long. It'll teach you whatever you need to know to get started. And I know I said started like four times. Uh, today's video is gonna be a little more advanced though. We got some other stuff I want you to learn. Make sure you know how to use message boxes to get a yes or no value. Make sure you how to no, make sure ugh, I can't talk today. Make sure you know how to create your own subs and functions. Make sure you know how to use a record set. We're going to use some basic SQL. We're going to use a for each loop. And we might throw in some basic error handling. I haven't decided yet if I if I like you guys, maybe we'll do this. I'm <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, these are all free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch these at a minimum first and then come on back. Today's going to be a little more advanced lesson. Um, there might be a couple other ones I'll throw in from time to time as, as we get to it, but yeah, that, that should get you started. Okay. Here I am in my tech help free template. This is a free database. You can grab a copy off my website if you want to. Let's start with the customer form. All right. Now, just for the purposes of class, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. So we got some room to work with here. We don't need all these fields. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to disable the user's ability to delete data themselves. So open up the form properties, go to allow deletions and make that no. So they can't delete records themselves. We want them to use our recycle bin button. Okay. Now next we'll need a button that'll act as our recycle bin. So I'm going to grab a command button, drop it here, and I'm going to cancel the wizard. This will be my recycle bin. You could put a caption in here if you want to. Or if you want to put an image on here, go find yourself a picture of a recycle bin. Not hard to find. I just did a quick Google search. I use my screen capture utility. And let's see here. I'm going to call this recycle bin button. And then for the picture, where are you? Pictures right here where it says none. I'm going to hit my dot, dot, dot button. I'm going to browse. I'm going to go to where my images are and change bitmaps to all files. And then I should see where it is right there. There's my snap that I, I save with my screen capture utility and hit OK. And there it is. And now we'll just make it the size of that graphic. There we go. There's our recycle bin button. See, that wasn't that hard to do. That's like access beginner stuff, folks, making buttons with images on them. Okay. Now, the coding. 
right click build event and it'll bring up the code editor i like to start off with an are you sure so if message box are you sure you want to recycle this record or send to the recycle bin or whatever you want to call it. yeah let's do send to the recycle bin you want to send this record to the recycle bin right comma vb yes no cancel i always like to give them that cancel option plus slide this over a little bit so you can see it better plus i like to go vb default button two so no is the default right plus vb question comma uh we'll just put recycle as the title and if that is not vb yes then exit sub all right let me rewrite that so the whole thing fits on the screen oh someone's beaming in Put a little line continuation character right there, and that way it fits in there. Okay, so we're gonna message box and say, are you sure? We're gonna say VBS no cancel, so I get three buttons. Default button is two, no, if they just hit enter. And then it's a question, recycles the title. If that's anything other than yes, we're just gonna exit sub. So it's not gonna bother doing anything, all right? All right, once we get past that point, now we need to open up two different record sources. One is gonna be the one we're gonna read from, we're going to read from the source, which in this case will be the customer table. And then we need another one we're going to write to, which is going to be the recycle bin. Okay, so we're reading from one, writing to another. So we need two record sources. So a record, yeah, record sets. Dim, we're going to call it um, our RS source as a record set. And the RS, we'll call it the bin, the recycle bin as the record set. Okay. Now, whenever I'm using multiple record sets that are pointing to the same database, I also like to declare a DB variable, DB as database. And I'm gonna set that, as soon as we're past this message box, I'm gonna say set DB equals current DB. Normally, I'll just say set, you know, RS equals current DB, whatever, if I'm only working with one record set, but if I got multiple record sets at the same time going on, I always declare a DB variable, right? Now don't forget, if you set it, you gotta forget it. So don't forget toward the end of your, your sub down here, right, set DB equals nothing. And yes, that phrase is on a t-shirt in my store. <laughs> you set it, you gotta forget it. I wasn't kidding. <laughs> I recently set up a store. <laughs> Check it out if you want some Access Learning Zone swag, I'll put a link down below. All right, so now we're gonna open up the source, which is gonna be set RS source, equals db dot open record set what are we opening up select star from customer t where customer id equals whatever customer id we're on on the current form so that's customer id just like that so now we've got an open record set to that record okay now what i want to do is i want to loop through all of the fields in this record set, I'm not looping through all the records. I want to loop through the fields. And this is how we're going to make this so it'll work with any table later on. Because you can have any number of fields in it. It's just going to drop all those fields into this table. So we're going to need a couple more variables here. We're going to need a variable to store the record information, right? It'll have first name, last name, all, all the stuff in it. So we'll call it record string as a string. And we're going to need a field object, FLD as a field. Okay. Now I can say once I've opened up this record set, I can say for each field, FLD, in RS source dot fields. Fields is the fields collection. It's a list of all of the fields in that record set. Customer ID, first name, last name. Uh, address, phone, whatever you, whatever fields you got in there, you can loop through them. And not only can you get the name of the field, but you can get the value of the field. Okay. So now what I can do is let's go up here real quick and let's say record string equals blank. Let's initialize that string. And now I'm going to say record string equals record string. And what's the field name? FLD.name. That's the name of the field, customer ID, and a colon, and 
fld.value. All right, so put the name and the value. Customer ID is four. First name, Richard. Now, field value might be null, so let's handle that with an nz. nz, and then just put an empty string there just in case we don't want any null errors, right? If you don't know what nz is, that's one of my expert topics. I'll put a link to it down below. Basically, it takes a value. If it's null, it substitutes it with something else. In this case, an empty string. Okay, and at the end of each line, just to make it readable, we'll put a VB new line. So you get one field per line, right? When you're done, next FLD, that'll loop through all of the fields in that record set. It'll create a list of them. Let's see what we got. I'm going to message box record string at this point right here just to see what we got. And while we're at it, let's close up our record set too. We're going to go rs.close and set it, forget it, rs equals nothing. Just for some clean, for some house clean. There's more that's going to go in the middle here. We still got to add this stuff. I just want to see if what we got right now is working. Okay, save it. Debug compile once in a while. Oh, variable not defined. Oh, RS, duh, it's RS source. See, I'm so used to using just RS. That's why you debug compile. It catches your stupid errors. RS source, RS source. We haven't initialized RS bin yet, so we're good. We just declared it. We didn't set it to anything. Debug compile once in a while again. All right, we're good. All right, save it, close it, close it, open it, click the button. Are you sure? Yes. Oh, look at it. Look at that. I've got one string with all of the data that's in this record, even the stuff you don't see. Because remember, we deleted that notes field and the family size, right? Now I could take this and dump that in my recycle bin table, which we have yet to create, and we'll do that in tomorrow's video. So tune in tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel. Or if you're a member, you can watch it right now because I'm going to, well, I'm going to probably break for lunch real quick and then I'm going to go record it. So by the time you see this, it'll probably be online already. All right. So lots more cool stuff coming up in part two. It'll probably be a part three too. I'm not sure yet, but we'll see. Uh, but that's your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part two. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.